Now available in paperback and coming to Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, Dark Succubus, the man who rules the world, is tempted by a sultry succubus in this all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, Dark Succubus in paperback or pre-order on Kindle Unlimited today. What happens when a family of Negro children of the corn go out for a family outing? You get a brawl like what happened at Disney's Toontown in Disneyland. Now, in Disney's Toontown in Disneyland a few days ago, we had an entire family of Negro children of the corn decide to get into a brawl right there in Disney's Toontown for the whole world to see. Now, when I take a critical examination of the behaviors in this incident, they are par for the course when it comes down to these Negro children of the corn, because these Negro children of the corn have been raised in single mother households. They have seen their mothers behave in violent and emotional fashions, and because there was no father in the home, for these Negro children of the corn, and they grew up with no parental real guidance, they grew up like stalks, and like the children of the corn, they make every place that they go literally into a real-life horror movie. And the real-life horror movie decided to come to Disneyland because this family of Negro children of the corn managed to save up enough food stamps or welfare money to manage to get a couple of tickets to Disneyland, and they decided to bring their violent and savage behavior to Disneyland for the entire world to see on the world stage. Because as those families and children came to Disneyland, they not only got to see Disney's Toontown, a place for families and children, they got taken to a horror movie with these Negro children of the corn. And that's what those Negro children of the corn did when they brawled. They turned that family space for families and children into a real life horror movie. And that's where they decided to go out here and act just like the Negro children of the corn that they actually are. Now this incident kicked off when this large land whale of an Afro-American Negro female was arguing with one of these beta male Afro-American Negroes who was wearing a pink shirt. And those are tells to me because as I took a critical look at this hungry, hungry hippo who was arguing with this beta male, I started to see how effeminate this beta male was. The pink shirt was one tell, the other tell was the way this beta male had his hair styled. So I looked at that ponytail that that guy had in the dreadlocks in, and I saw how effeminate this beta male was because only a beta male is going to sit there and argue with one of these females knowing that he is here in a play, public place like Disneyland and that when you are in a place like Disneyland, as a black man, you should know, first and foremost, you not only are representing your family, you are also representing your race. And when you are out here in a place like Disneyland and you are getting emotional and getting into it with an argumentative female, what you are doing is going out here and proving many of these racist points about the Afro-American Negro male, that the Negro male has no discipline and no self-control. And because this beta male did not did, went out here and, and behaved like this, he proved many white racist and white supremacist points in the way that he behaved. Because he didn't understand that when, again, you represent the race, and that's why you have to be on your best behavior when you're out here, because these racists take video like this and they use it as their example for why they need to be racist and why they need to go out of their way to discriminate 
against the Af against black people, and they use people like this beta male Negro as their example because he, after getting spit in the face by this hippo of a female, decides to start getting physical with that female, grabbing her braided weave and then slapping and hitting her, and then getting into it with another park goer, another member of the family, and this brawl, as it was starting, I started to see the deeply troubling, again, effeminate behaviors of the children of the corn. I saw the masculine acting female spitting in the face of this effeminate beta male, and this beta male then getting emotional and starting to get violent by grabbing the woman. And the way he grabbed the female showed me that this man had been raised in a single mother household because this man had learned how to fight, not like a man, but he learned how to fight like a woman because I looked at the gestures he was making, those pinwheel flailing actions, and that is how a woman fights another woman. So I saw clearly where this beta male had been raised by females and I saw from the way he was re reacting, act, f acting on impulse, and then going and flailing like, like he did, he was showing me he was acting just like a female. And the reaction that the obese woman did that was really troubling as he was getting into it with her and then with another man in a white t-shirt, this was the most troubling behavior of all, that they literally pushed the baby stroller out of the way in order to keep fighting each other. So these children of the corn did not only not only think about the consequences of their actions, but they didn't even think about the safety of their children. It was all about their emotional state at the point and all about them getting the satisfaction of harming another family member so that they could sate their feelings. And I want you to think about that, that these so-called family members didn't even think about their family or the safety of their family. It was all about their feelings and sating their feelings at the time. That is some animalistic and primal behavior that only a savage would participate in because civilized people understand that even though they have these feelings, they will navigate through their emotions, put their feelings aside, and while they are feeling something, they will not act on it. And when you are in a place like Disneyland, you will understand that, yes, I have these feelings about these things going on, but what I'm going to do, because I am in a public place, and I'm in a public place with families and children, is I am going to let my feelings be put aside so that when we get out of this Disneyland, we can then go deal with that on another occasion. But because the children of the corn have been raised by these single mothers and act on impulse, they don't think about setting their feelings aside. They have to set, they have to go out here and act on their feelings right now. And this beta male, after getting spit in the face by this masculine female, decided to act on his feelings, and he decided to get physical with this masculine female. And then after the masculine female decides to fight him, then another one comes in and starts fighting. Then more people come in and start fighting in the same family. And as this brawl escalates, we get an older woman who is disabled getting out of a wheelchair to break things up, and then she falls down, and then this beta male in the pink shirt continues to escalate things with his emotional behavior, and his emotional behavior is something disturbing to see. When I look at that behavior, it's just like looking at another female, and he was literally, again, wearing a pink shirt, wearing a ponytail, and he was just as feminine as many of the females right out there. And when I looked at that incident, it was really disturbing to watch him not only fight women like a woman, but watching him fight another man 
like a woman, and he would not stop, just like many of these females out here, showing us all how dangerous these dysfunctional beta males are once their emotions are riled up. Because these beta males, once their emotions get riled up, they don't care where they fight, they don't care who they hurt, and they don't care about anything until they get their feelings sated and they get satisfaction by hurting someone. And this brawl, it went on as he just fought everyone, and it took several people to try to break it up, and it took several people to bring him down, and the fight just still went on. He was talking about how he was a crip, and again, showing all of this extremely effeminate behavior, not, uh, not even caring that this video was being recorded and broadcast all over the world for the world to not only see his family, but to see an image of black people that fit the stereotypes that white racists and white supremacists want to see. And this whole incident was completely embarrassing for the entire black race, and he didn't even care about how he behaved in a place like Disneyland, not only embarrassing his own family, but also embarrassing the entire black race. But what's even worse than the way he embarrassed the black race and the way he embarrassed his family was the example this this family of adults set for these children. Because as I was watching that video and I saw that that, lar that morbidly obese land whale pushed that child aside. It showed me how little regard these females had for their own children. Because I saw one child, after the two children were in the stroller, crying and wandering, didn't even know where his own mother was, because she was so caught up in her feelings fighting with this beta male that she wasn't even thinking about the safety of her own child who was crying and looking, just looking for his mother and not even knowing where his own mother was because his mother was too caught up in her feelings fighting with this beta male savage, not thinking about his safety and not thinking about the safety of the two children in the stroller. A complete stranger has to come out here and watch the two children in the stroller because these, these children of the corn are too busy brawling to think about the things that are more important, things that an adult who can navigate through their emotions would understand that, look, my child's safety is extremely important, and I need to look out for my child's safety above all else. And these children need me to be able to look out for their safety, and I need to sit there, and if I have an issue with this man, I'm going to put this to the side so that I get, so we can get these children home and get them safe. But no, this family, again, because they were in their feelings and acting on impulse, they decided to go out here and brawl, and they left those kids out here all by themselves. And even worse than abandoning these children to fight each other, the other thing that was troubling was the message and model that these parents were setting, because as a mother, this woman, as a teacher to her children, sent a lesson to her children that if you have an issue with someone and you want to resolve it, you go out there and attack them right then and there. That's what that big, fat, hungry, hungry hippo did when she spit in that man's face, was she sent a message to her children teaching them that, one, she did not have to respect him as a man, Two, she did not have to respect male authority. And three, she did not have to think about anybody's safety. It's all about her feelings. And whatever she's feeling at the time, she can just go out here and act on it. And that's the message she was sending to her children. That is what she was teaching her children when she spit in that man's face. And then as they were fighting, she was teaching her children that, no, no your safety doesn't matter. Your health doesn't matter. Your public image doesn't matter as long as you are getting your personal emotional satisfaction. That is all that matters. And that's the message that she sent to her children 
as they brawled in Disney's Toontown, telling them that Disney's that any place they want to go is a place to go out here and fight, and that they don't have to respect public spaces, they don't have to respect the safety of others. It's all about their feelings and how they act on and, and acting on your impulses. And when I take a crit further critical examination of this incident, this is why I can agree with David Carroll on one point of this is why I don't go out to public places where there are large gatherings of Afro-American Negro children of the corn. Because when you have large gatherings of Afro-American Negro children of the corn, what is guaranteed to happen, especially on a hot summer day, is you're going to get one of these Negro children of the corn angry, one of these Negro children of the corn is going to get emotional, and I guarantee you, one of these Negro children of the corn is going to get violent. And this is why I avoid things like cookouts and other gatherings of Afro-American Negroes, because when you have Negro children of the corn who come from these female-headed households, these female, these kids from the corn, they do not know how to behave in a social situation. They do not know how to interact in a social situation. And anything as simple as bumping into someone as you are trying to leave a crowded space can turn into a violent incident. And oftentimes when you go to one of these incidents, whether it be a Super Bowl party, a house party, or even a pub or cookout or a gathering, one of these Afro-American Negro children of the corn, what they're going to do is they are going to either get physical with their mouth and getting loud and emotional, then they're going to get physical with their fists, and if they have a pistol or a knife on them, you are guaranteed to either get shot or stabbed because these beta males and these females, they act on emotion, they act on impulse, and they don't think about the consequences of their actions, nor do they think about the safety of others or even their own intangibles, such as their freedom. So that's why I avoid any sort of large gathering of Afro-American Negroes, because I know that in that gathering, there are going to be some of these Negro children of the corn, and these Negro children of the corn make any place that they go a, a, a house of horrors. And we saw that in Disney's Toontown, where all you needed was a small sprinkling of these Negro children of the corn to grow into a day of terror in a family environment like Disney's Toontown. And as they participated in their carnage, all they did was tarnish the memories of all those people who just came to Disney's Toontown to share some family, some memories at Disneyland. And that instead of them getting memories of Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and many of the Disney characters, they got a unforgettable memory of the Negro children of the corn that will be burned into their minds as an image of what represents black people and what represents how black people behave. And with this image burned in their mind, this is going to perpetuate more of the same racist stereotypes that white supremacists believe black people participate in and reinforce the idea in their twisted minds that this is why they have a right to discriminate against black people, and this is why they have a right to go out here and make sure that their personal spaces are places where black people can't come and where black people don't need to be. This is what Negro children of the corn do with their extremely violent and dysfunctional behavior. They make life harder for other black people as they go out here and act a fool out here on a public space and making the black race look like a complete disgrace.
If you'd like to see, understand why Negro children of the corn behave the way that they do, I urge you to pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle formats. And you can also find The Man Crisis on Smashwords and the iBookstore and Barnes & Noble. And if you want to pick up some of my other SJS Direct publications, like the ISIS series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the Smisterella trilogy, you may also pick up those books. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, E-Steam, The Sands of Time. It's action and adventure in ancient Egypt in this terrific teen time travel romance. Get your copy of E-Steam, The Sands of Time at your favorite online bookseller today.